Welcome to Social Studies with Miss Pritchard. This video is for Global One and it covers the river valleys in Mesopotamia and Egypt. All right, Mesopotamia is Greek for the land between the rivers, and they mean the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, which run through present day Iraq. It is also part of what is known as the Fertile Crescent which is an area of rich farmland that stretches from the eastern shore of the Mediterranean to the Persian Gulf. Now, Sumerian city-states began to develop around 3000 BCE. This is after the Neolithic Revolution. All right, now Mesopotamia had several geographic challenges. The first and probably the biggest is the unpredictable flooding and periods of drought. They could get floods strong enough to wipe out entire cities, or they could have long periods of drought with no rain, and that meant starving people. The land is also flat, so there is no natural protection from invasion. And they have scarce building resources. There aren't many trees or stone quarries or anything that they can use to build walls or cities. So they have to solve that problem. All right, the solution for that was government. The government developed to build large public projects like irrigation systems that would bring the water from the rivers to the fields and it helped them build city walls and they used the government also to help them trade. The Sumerians traded with places as far away as the Indus Valley by India to get the resources they needed. All right, the culture. They had a very rigid social structure, meaning you did not change social classes. If you were born a warrior, you stayed a warrior. There was no getting rich and having a great life. You pretty much lived the life you were born into. Now, they were led by a warrior king and priests. Warrior kings had the power because they protected the city. Priests had power because they were the ones that spoke with the gods and everybody believed that the gods were either punishing or rewarding them. Now they had a polytheistic religion, which means they worshipped many gods. And in Mesopotamia, they believed the gods were very mean. They were punished more than they were rewarded. And each city-state had a ziggurat for worship. That was the temple where they went. And a ziggurat looks a lot like the temples with steps going up the sides. So it looks like a whole bunch of smaller squares stacked on top of each other. They also developed cuneiform, which is a pictograph writing system to keep records. Now pictograph means they used small pictures instead of individual letters for their writing. All right, contributions to the world today. Well, they have cuneiform, which is a form of writing. The wheel for transportation, we still use that today. The arch for construction. The potter's wheel for manufacturing, that's what allowed them to make vessels that would hold their oil and their grain and eventually wine and all of that. The sundial was used for time and record keeping. They had a 12-month calendar. They also developed a number system. And they wrote one of the earliest stories. It was Gilgamesh. It is a basic hero story, and it also includes a flood. Laws. This is the major, major turning point in history. You need to highlight this, star it, draw huge gold stars all around it, fireworks, something. You need to know that Hammurabi's code is the first code of law. And this is the promise of the government to protect the people in return for loyalty, service, and taxes. And these laws were carved into pillars so everybody knew what they were and they knew what the punishments were. And these laws covered everything in daily life, marriage, property, inheritance, vandalism, negligence, all of that. And this is where we get the phrase, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. If you were of equal status and you knocked out somebody's eye, your eye was knocked out. If you built a house and it fell down and killed the owner's son, 
your son was killed. If, however, you are of different statuses, the richer person would pay the poorer person. And if it was the poorer person that was at fault, most likely you died. Egypt. Egypt is actually located in northeast Africa. And it is first settled around 5000 BCE. This is during the Neolithic Revolution. And people settled there because of the annual flooding of the Nile River. It deposits dark, rich silt, and that makes it one of the most fertile places on Earth. To this day, we get tons of crops, and especially cotton, from that region. The Nile River is the key to Egyptian development. It is the longest river in the world at 4,160 miles, and it flows north from the mountains of Ethiopia to the Mediterranean Sea. And as a local connection, the Genesee River also flows north. Not many rivers in the world flow north, so keep that in mind if you get a geography question. Egyptian culture, they also had a very rigid social structure. And they had a religion that focused on the afterlife, where you are judged for your actions. The bodies were mummified, so if they were judged to be of pure heart and soul, they got to go on to a wonderful life in the other world. If, however, your heart or soul were impure, you were devoured. All right, and they had a theocracy. They viewed their pharaoh as a god king. He wasn't just a mere mortal. He was a god. They had a polytheistic religion based on nature. Their gods were generally nice, and you can see them drawn with human bodies but animal heads. And their architecture is also tied to their religion, at least the parts that we have remaining. And those are the pyramids. They have been standing for thousands of years. Egyptian contributions include hiero hieroglyphics, another pictograph writing. Hieroglyphics were not deciphered until the 19th century when they discovered the Rosetta Stone. If you want to do some extra credit, you can do some research on the Rosetta Stone and turn it into me. They had papyrus, which was a much better writing surface than clay, and it is similar to today's paper. They had a 365-day calendar that was only six hours short of the current solar year. They had advanced geometry that they used to survey lands for taxes. They used stone columns in building, and their doctors would check your pulse, they could splint a broken bone, and they conducted successful surgeries. All right, Egypt is the first nation state. A nation state is a country united by a common culture, language, and history. It is believed that King Narmer united Upper and Lower Egypt into a single country around 3000 BC. And they used the red and the white crown to symbolize the united nations of Upper and Lower Egypt. All right, remember to copy down the notes and turn them in to me for a grade or show me your notebook, which is actually the better idea.